Thank you, Chairman Grassley. Let me uh, first thank you for holding this hearing and for your incredible work uh, helping this bill uh, continue to move forward. Um, and let me also associate myself with uh, all of your remarks. This is going to be, I think, a very uh, bipartisan process. The so-called Panama Papers, followed by the Paradise Papers, exposed what many in the law enforcement anti-corruption world already knew, that kleptocrats, corrupt officials, tax cheats, drug traffickers, terrorists, and other criminals from around the world routinely use shell companies to hide assets and obscure illegal activities. Sadly, thanks to our lax incorporation laws, the United States is now a favorite destination for money laundering. Make no mistake, we are a facilitator as well as a target in this racket. Russian kleptocrats, drug dealers, and tax cheats all use the same tool to launder their ill-gotten gains and evade law enforcement, the Shell Corporation. A Shell Corporation serves no economic purpose and conducts no real business. Instead, these companies exist to hold legal title to bank accounts, real estate, or other assets, hiding the true human owners. The Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, a division of the U.S. Treasury Department, found that 30% of the cash purchases of high-end real estate by shell companies in six major cities involved a suspicious buyer. In some places, as Chairman Grassley pointed out, this is affecting and warping the housing market. The crimes being hidden may be complex, and the assets they conceal may be elaborate, but the answer to the problem of shell corporations is simple. Require private corporations to report and update their true beneficial ownership information and make that information available to law enforcement. That is what the Title Act does. Over the past year, Congress and this committee in particular have heard law enforcement and foreign policy experts sound the alarm that our lack of incorporation transparency is a glaring loophole in our laws and is putting our nation's security at risk. In a March 2017 Crime and Terrorism Subcommittee hearing on Russia's interference in our election, Heather Connolly, a scholar at the Center for Strategic and International Studies and author of the Kremlin Playbook, warned that, and I'll quote her here, enhancing transparency and the effectiveness of the Western democratic tools, instruments, and institutions is critical to resilience against Russian influence, end quote. In a November 2017 judiciary hearing, Kenneth Blanco, Deputy Assistant Attorney General from the Criminal Division, explained, and I quote, the pervasive use of front companies, shell companies, nominees or other means to conceal the true beneficial owners of assets is one of the greatest loopholes in this country's anti-money laundering regime. From Treasury, Jennifer Fowler, the Deputy Assistant Secretary, Office of Terrorist Financing and Financial Crimes, called the lack of beneficial ownership information a vulnerability. John Cassara, a former Treasury Special Agent, told our committee that, and I quote, requiring the real owner of a U.S. company to be named during the incorporation process will cut down in dramatic fashion the ability of criminals to finance their crimes, end quote. Kendall Day is here at the table. Perhaps he said it best at a Senate banking hearing last month. He said, beneficial ownership is a problem we need to fix. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent that a summary of the support for this bill and a variety of further quotes in favor of it be appended at the end of my remarks. Without objection, it will be placed in the record. We know the problem, and we know the solution. Transparency and business ownership is not a novel idea. The rest of the world is moving ahead. In fact, every member of the European Union has committed to ensuring such transparency. The United Kingdom has already implemented its own transparency law. The light of corporate transparency 
is about to shine on criminal assets hidden in European shell companies, which means that lots of money will be scuttling off to find new dark homes. We cannot let America be a new dark home. We cannot let America continue to facilitate corruption and crime. All the way back in 1630, John Winthrop told his fellow early American settlers, we must always consider that we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people are upon us. Our European partners are doing their part to combat crime facilitated by shell corporations. If we don't soon follow suit, I fear we will risk our place as that city on a hill, as that beacon of justice. We don't want America to be a bigger, better Cayman Islands. We want it to stand for something. I'm glad we are holding this hearing today, and I look forward to hearing from our distinguished witnesses. I'd conclude, Mr. Chairman, by saying if there is a clash of civilizations in the world today, it is a clash of the rule of law civilizations against civilizations that are run by kleptocracy, autocracy, thievery, and brutality. And the institutions of rule of law that support and aid and abet the protection of the assets from the kleptocrats, the autocrats, the thieves, and the brutes are doing a disservice to the civilization of rule of law. We should have no tolerance for that. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony, Mr. Day, and thank you for your service to the Department of Justice. Is it necessary, in your view, for the underlying beneficial ownership information to be made public by the Secretary of State, or is it simply mm -hmm. adequate if it is collected so that law enforcement can obtain that information with proper process, like subpoenas or warrants? So the, the law enforcement point of view is, is making it available to law enforcement. Obviously, decisions about whether or not um, the information is available to the public uh, have, have effects um, that other people can speak to perhaps better than I. That's a separate question. But from your point of view, what matters here is that we enable this information to be collected so that under proper process, law enforcement can gain access to it and go about its business of investigating crimes. That's exactly right, Senator. Some of the uh, crimes that are facilitated by this shell company money laundering, cyber crimes? Uh, definitely. Theft and fraud, financial crimes? Yes, sir. Child sex trafficking? Yes. Uh, terrorism? Yeah, terrorism financing, for sure. Terrorism financing, for sure. Um, does the IRS SSS form that you file to get your employee identification number, your employer identification number, I should say, provide an adequate alternative to the information that you're here testifying that you need? No, no, it does not. There's insufficient information for law enforcement available as part of that form, uh, and also um, as, as um, uh, you're undoubtedly aware, there are uh, limitations on law enforcement's access to tax information, often requires a court order. Um, so uh, neither is there sufficient information, nor is uh, that available at the proper moments in investigation to really uh, maximize our ability to uh, stamp out all the types of crime that you mentioned um, uh, that we could with access to beneficial ownership information. And assuming that a shell corporation wanted an employer identification number and got one uh, from the IRS, all they have to report is a responsible party who could be a lawyer or a cutout or some kind of proxy who's an obstacle to a law enforcement investigation rather than the true beneficial owner, correct? Uh, it, it is correct that the information required on an SS4 is not beneficial ownership information. Yes. Um, let me ask you, um, you said something here that I think points us in an important direction. More broadly, you said in your testimony, money laundering undermines the rule of law <clears throat> and our democracy because it supports and rewards corruption and organized crime, allowing it to grow and fester. Elaborate for a moment on that larger point you're making about the role 
of America and shell corporations and the danger to rule of law. Thank you, Senator. I, I think uh, you put it well in, in your opening statement. The danger to the United States is because the United Kingdom, the European Union, and other financial systems around the globe are putting in place beneficial ownership regimes. Not only do we risk falling behind in the sense of no longer being a leader, um, but we actually become more vulnerable because criminals who are going to move their illicit proceeds are going to be looking for more favorable places to use and store them. And given the, the centrality of the U.S. financial system in the first place, we're already attractive target. But to have that competitive disadvantage where criminals seek us out because we have less protections than other jurisdictions, um, that just means more, more harm to American citizens. And not a great message from the city on the hill. Not a great message, that's correct. Now, let's imagine this takes you a little bit out of your pure law enforcement perspective, but let's imagine that you are... Uh, a citizen of a country that suffers under a kleptocratic, autocratic, brutal, and corrupt regime. You see suffering and poverty all around you. You see the country that you love being looted by its government. And at the end of that sickening spectacle, you see the people who are doing this to your country overseas, in rule of law countries, working with their yacht brokers, working with their lawyers, working with their real estate agencies, and enjoying the protection of rule of law for their ill-gotten gains robbing your country. What kind of feeling do you think, as a uh, patriot of your country, that would engender in those foreign places? Well, it's hard for me to put my uh, uh, to answer that question and, and imagine what that would be like. But I can tell you that U.S. law enforcement is very focused on, uh, even in the absence of a beneficial ownership regime, protecting the American financial system and ensuring that it doesn't become a haven for those types of illicit conduct and illicit proceeds. And we could do more of that important work with a beneficial ownership statute. It's not a good look for us to be the sanctuary for corrupt individuals in the eyes of those who've been the victims of them. It, it's important to take steps as, as we are, and we would be able to take more steps to protect the U.S. financial system um, with a good beneficial ownership regime. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Common, give me some idea of what the scale is of the Shell Corporation money laundering market. How much money you think roughly flows through that? I know that's going to be only to a general order of magnitude. Uh, so uh, thank you for that question. Uh, because they are anonymous and it is a secret uh, financial system, it is hard to estimate. Um, you have rough numbers. Rough numbers. Uh, so Over a billion dollars a year? Oh, much larger. So in Over terms of the overall money flowing through a secret or shadow financial system, Gabriel Zuckman, the economist out of California, estimates it's around $8 trillion a year. Um, I would also say, point you to a study by Global Financial Integrity, which estimates that a trillion dollars each year leaves the developing world, just the developing world, uh, each year. Um, and that money, as I think was noted earlier, so as, as that money goes from developing countries, uh, presumably non-rule of law countries in many cases, and presumably illicit extraction of wealth from those countries, and it lands in the safety of our rule of law countries, there are innumerable rule of law society profiteers who make money off of that. Are there not lawyers, accountants, realtors, Yacht brokers, all of them make, many of them can make a very substantial living off of getting this money relocated into rule of law, correct? Uh, I don't have figures on the amount of money being made off of the setting up of anonymous shell companies, but uh, those uh, parties that you did name are all uh, corporate formation uh, agents or ways in which moving facilitators. Yes, facilitators. And uh, some of them are not entirely um, praiseworthy, shall we say. You, in your testimony, you describe one, and I quote, responding to an email that was sent out kind of as a, as a bait-type operation by the University of Texas and Brigham University and Griffiths University, and the response came back, 
from a corporate agent, quote, your stated purpose could well be a front for funding terrorism. If you wanted a functioning and youthful Florida corporation, you'd need someone here to put their name on it, set up bank accounts, etc. I wouldn't even consider doing that for less than $5,000 a month. In the balance that we as legislators have to strike between the public interest in protecting our national security, in allowing law enforcement to do its job, and in protecting ourselves from international crime versus continuing to allow those lawyers, realtors, accountants, and yacht brokers who are facilitating this enterprise, where should the public policy balance come down? Um, so that study you referred to uh, was undertaken, I think, in 2014. Uh, they sent out thousands and thousands of emails around the world, and uh, their conclusion was that the United States is, in fact, through the corporate formation agents you were talking about, the easiest place to set up an anonymous shell company in the world. Um, and how solicitous should we be of those individuals who are supporting that? Is that a really, like, primary public policy imperative of the United States government in this context? Well, uh, my coalition and the members uh, believe that the use of anonymous shell companies uh, is, is an evil. Is an evil, and we believe it should be ended. Um, Mr. Ponce, let me, I've got a couple of minutes left. Um, with respect to the concerns that Mr. O'Shea indicated, that this was too burdensome. Basically, I think what we're asking is that when you're setting up a corporation, you fill an additional line that says truthfully who the real owner is and that you contribute on the kind of information that you would when you're setting up a bank account. Could you react to why that's too burdensome? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Senator. I, I, I do think it's, it's important to look at burden and when you look at what is required of legal entities to open a bank account in the United States, I think that's a good baseline. It's hard to know why you would want to have a small business, I have one, and not have a bank account. Um, and so if company formation processes can actually prepare companies for the documentation that they will need in order to finance that company or in order to actually conduct business, that's a service. It's a service not only to the business owner and the business community, it's a service to financial institutions that are currently spending hundreds of millions of dollars each, in some instances, to comply with customer due diligence requirements because their customers don't understand this. And so if we were to educate our business community from inception about the importance of beneficial ownership information, what it is, then as several have said, we could make this a synergistic regime where we do this once, we do it right, we present that documentation from inception to the life of the company, to our financial institutions, and it's seamless. That's, that's the way that, that I would recommend proceeding. My time is up. 